So yeah, let's talk about Rohash. So Rohash uh, enabling fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for uh, large genomes. So this is a bit about the genome analysis, the, which I also mentioned in the, in the last uh, week's lecture. Uh, so what is uh, nanopore sequencing? Nanopore sequencing is uh, one of the widely used the sequencing technology out there. So it has uh, uh, several benefits, such as it can sequence a large uh, fragments of nucleic acid molecules, large fragments of DNA, up to 2 million bases. It offers very high throughput. Uh, it is relatively cost-effective, and it provides some unique benefits, such as real-time genome analysis. Um, all right, so then let's look at how nanopore sequencing works. So this figure shows the uh, uh, sequencing of a uh, DNA uh, nucleic acid molecule up there while it moves through a tiny pore called nanopore. So as it moves to the tiny pore, this nanopore, the ionic current measurements are generated at a certain throughput, and these measurements correspond to particular bases uh, in the DNA. And while these, uh, and this is basically in the form of electrical signals. And while these raw electrical signals are generated, we can utilize utilize some computational tools to uh, analyze this raw signal while matching the throughput of the device, which we call uh, real-time analysis. And this real-time analysis can be useful for many reasons. Uh, one uh, particular reason is, is the ability of taking real-time decisions. This means that we can actually stop the sequencing of a read or the entire sequencing run early based on this real-time analysis. So there are mainly two benefits of real-time analysis. First one is it enables us to overlap the, uh, uh, the, the essential, reduce the uh, entire uh, latency of genome analysis by overlapping the sequencing time with the analysis time. Uh, the second benefit is that we can essentially uh, stop this, uh, the sequencing of a single read or the entire run uh, uh, rather than sequencing it fully, which, can, which has the potential to reduce the sequencing cost and the time uh, significantly. And there are also certain challenges for real-time genome analysis. First one is we need to essentially match the throughput of the nanopore device uh, to enable real-time analysis. We need to make timely decisions, quick decisions, because we don't want to unnecessarily sequence the DNA. We want to stop the sequencing of DNA as soon as possible. The third uh, challenge is we want to make accurate analysis because we analyze these raw signals, which are usually noisy, and but we still want our analysis to be accurate. And we also want to make all these computation power efficient because we can essentially sequence we can use these uh, sequencers uh, with mobile devices, which essentially has uh, 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 limited, let's say, uh, computational resources and, and the battery, uh, uh, essentially. So with that, uh, I'll basically go over our executive summary. Uh, the real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals usually lacks the necessary accuracy and speed, especially for large genomes. Our goal is to enable fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. And to this end, we make two key contributions. The first one is we propose the first hash-based mechanism that can quickly and accurately analyze raw nanopore signals for large genomes. And the second is we propose a novel technique that we call sequence until that can accurately and dynamically stop the entire sequencing run of all reads at once if further sequencing is unnecessary. Uh, we provide essentially uh, some key results uh, across three use cases on five uh, real genomes of varying sizes. Uh, we show significant speed ups such as up to 26x and the 3.4x better average throughput compared to the existing state of the artworks. We also provide uh, around 1.15 and 2.13 more accurate mapping results uh, for large genomes. And our sequence until technique reduces the sequencing time and cost by 15x. So before diving into our work, Rawhash, I'll show the, uh, the uh, two main approaches, two main existing works. The first one is to use essential deep neural networks to translate these raw signals into bases. Uh, this approach essentially provides more accurate analysis because it, it has the potential to reduce the noisy analysis uh, from uh, raw signals as we move from raw signals to the bases. Uh, uh, but essentially, this uh, requires some costly and power-hungry uh, uh, computational uh, uh, resources, let's say, to uh, use these, utilize these DNN-based works. The second approach is to map these signals directly to reference genomes without base calling them. So the base calling would be these translating these signals to the bases. Uh, so basically, this offers a, a certain opportunities, such as uh, raw signals. Uh, 
uh, contains richer information than just individual bases. So it has the potential for more accurate analysis. And it also provides the opportunity for efficient analysis with better scalability and portability because we don't have to use these costly DNN approaches. So if you look these uh, uh, mapping row signals directly uh, 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 to reference genomes more closely, let's say. Uh, so when we're doing this analysis for small reference genomes, such as a bacteria or viral genomes, we see that there are fewer candidate regions in these small genomes. So this means that we can make accurate mapping and also we can still provide some high throughput because of because the, these, these type of genomes are small. So when we basically move to the large genomes, what we see is that uh, the, there is a substantial larger number of regions that we need to check per read as the genome size increases. So this is problematic for two reasons. There are some mechanisms which are probabilistic. So these mechanisms become uh, very inaccurate because of these in increased number of regions. So they, uh, it, make, it makes them challenging to make, let's say, accurate decisions among these uh, many regions. The second problem is that uh, some other approaches perform some distance calculation uh, on many regions uh, with, as this genome size increases. So this means that their uh, performance or the throughput decreases substantially because of this distance calculation that they are making. Uh, so then we find that the existing solutions are either inaccurate or inefficient for large genomes. Uh, then uh, I'll essentially go over uh, raw hash R work. Uh, so in this work, our goal is to, is to enable fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. Uh, to this end, we propose raw hash, and we make two key contributions. Uh, first, we propose the first hash-based uh, search mechanism uh, to, quickly and uh, to quickly and accurately map raw nanopore signals to reference genomes. Second, we propose a technique called sequence until that can accurately and dynamically stop the entire sequencing run at once if further sequencing is unnecessary based on some computation that we're making. So I'm going to be discussing uh, 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 this, the first uh, 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 contribution. So uh, the key idea or the key observation that we make in raw hash is that uh, uh, these raw signals uh, are essentially the identical nucleotides uh, 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 may uh, have different raw signals. So although they can, provide the same content in terms of the nucleotides, their so, raw signals will uh, vary because of essentially the noises these raw signals are carrying. And essentially one idea to still identify these similarities is to make some distance calculation between these raw signals. For example, you may apply some Euclidean distance and then you can calculate the distance and then you can figure out whether these signals are close to each other. However, this is very costly. This becomes ex extremely costly, especially for large genomes. And our idea is essentially to, uh, instead of doing this distance calculation, to generate some hash values from these raw signals and then quickly these match these hash values to identify the similarity. But to achieve this, there are some uh, challenges. The first challenge is that we need to be generating the same hash value from similar enough signals, although these signals are different, let's say, if they are similar enough, you should be able to generate the same hash value to, to be able to match them. The second is that we need to be, be, be basically able to accurately to find similar regions uh, as few as possible. So we don't really want to unnecessarily increase the regions that we're finding if they are inaccurate. Uh, so then uh, these are the overview of the steps that we're taking in raw hash. First, we start by converting the reference genome and the raw signals to the uh, to essentially the representative of uh, to some basic values that are representative of KMERS, which are subsequences of the reference genome and the signal, uh, and then essentially to reduce the variation effect, we quantize these values into smaller values, and then. Uh, by merging some of these quantized values into a single value, we generate their hash values. And then by matching these hash values, we figure out some matching regions between the reference genome and raw nanopore signals. And then we perform further more, uh, let's say, uh, 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 sensitive analysis to figure out the similarity between the uh, raw nanopore signals and the reference genome. And essentially, this part is done only uh, once per reference genome. So the reference genomes are constant, more or less. So you can do this step only once. And then, for example, you can do this for human reference genome. And whenever you have reads from a, uh, from a human genome, you essentially can repeat these steps in real time and then uh, use the data that we generate in this step to figure out uh, for similarity. So I'll go over uh, these steps 
step by step, essentially starting with the first step, which is uh, the conversion from the reference genome and the signal to, uh, to the event values. So what is an event value or what is an event? So event is essentially a segment, some segment of the raw signal, which corresponds to a particular k like particular subsequence uh, uh, of length k. And uh, the event detection mechanisms finds these segments to identify the cameras. So this is essentially the idea. And so these start and end positions are usually marked by abrupt changes in the signal that corresponds to essentially new sequencing of a new base in, in, in this particular uh, nanopore. And to identify these abrupt changes, usually the statistical methods are used. Uh, and essentially after we identify these abrupt changes, the segmentation points, what we do is that we take the average of these signals within, within a particular segment and then uh, figure out the, uh, the average value, which we call an event value, which corresponds to, let's say, a particular KMR that we don't know uh, which one it is. Uh, so this is basically the event and the event values. Uh, so then how do we convert the reference genome to the event values? Uh, so this is a reference genome, and this, these are its KMRs, which we covered last week. Uh, to convert the reference genome into uh, event values, we uh, utilize a lookup table that we call KMR model. This KMR model essentially provides the expected event values for each KMR. So what we do is that this, this KMR model is pre-constructed based on the correct characteristics of nanopore sequencer. And then we essentially use this KMR model. So we look at the KMR and then look at the KMR model and then figure out what is the expected event value for that particular uh, KMR. And then we do some normalization Etc. so that uh, these values are comparable uh, 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 later on. Uh, so this was the reverse uh, reference to event conversion. So how do we convert the signals to events again? Uh, so as I said, we perform a statistical uh, technique uh, that we call event detection. This event detection identifies the signal regions corresponds to, uh, the corresponding to specific KMERs in the signal. Uh, these uh, segmentation techniques are statistical tests essentially to identify the abrupt changes uh, in the signal. And then we calculate the average, calculate the mean uh, within these segmentation points and then normalize them again so that these values are comparable to the values that we generate from the reference genome. So then this means that we have these consecutive events corresponding to, corresponding to the consecutive KMERs. So the question is, can we now match these events, which are essentially the KMERs, between reference genome and the signal to identify the similarities? So the answer is going to be uh, no, which we're going to be describing in the next quantization step. So remember our observation is, uh, remember our observation, which is essentially there are slight differences in the raw signals from identical KMERs because of these noise issues from the nanopore sequencers. So this means that we cannot directly match these event values to each other, it, which is not feasible and accurate. You're not going to be finding many matches due to these variations. So the key idea is that is to quantize uh, these event values so that uh, we can enable assigning this identical quantized value to similar event values. So there is essentially a very uh, simple quantization idea over there to reduce this value into a smaller uh, set of values. It's like a bucketing idea. Uh, so I'm not going to go further uh, into the details of this quantization, uh, which, uh, but I'll basically be describing the next step, which is the hashing step. Uh, so essentially each event or each quantized event usually represents a very small KMR, which is around six to nine uh, characters. So knowing that the uh, reference genome is around 3 billion bases, so this means that you're going to be finding an extremely large number of matches if you essentially rely on a very small uh, sequence. So assume that you're using a subsequence of length six and then looking at a, a, a reference genome whose length is 3 billion, then this means that you're going to be finding too many, let's say, uh, matches, which is not really practical or feasible to look at them, to look at such a large number of matches. So then essentially our idea is to reduce this potential number of matches. And how do we do it? We essentially create longer KMERs. So this is the idea from shorter KMERs. And how do we do it? We essentially concatenate uh, these consecutive events, their quantized values uh, together. We essentially pack these quantized event values together to generate some value. And then we use some low collision hash function to generate a hash value from it. And so this essentially becomes the hash value for a longer KMR uh, that uh, we sequence from, from a sequencer. So this, these are essentially all the steps up until, up until here. 
so this means that we now have these hash values from both reference genome and the raw signals. So then this means that we can store the hash values that we generate from reference genome and then uh, query this hash table using the hash values that we generate uh, from signals uh, that are generated in real time. And then if there are some matches, these are the matching positions. These are our candidate regions that can be similar, let's say, between the reference genome and the, and the signal. And then further, we do some sensitive calculation, which are chaining, which is some essentially dynamic programming-based calculation uh, to identify the, the real, let's say, the uh, similar regions. And then we do these operations essentially continuously as the raw signals are generated in real time. We continue to decide whether we should continue mapping the signal or not. So if we essentially should continue, we process the next chunk of data and then do all these steps again and then make the decision again. And this decision is based on like essentially some, let's say, uh, confidence, whether we can map the street confidently to a particular region or not. And if we can decide on that, we say, okay, uh, then this read maps somewhere so we can stop mapping. And this means that we can, we can stop sequencing that read by using uh, these uh, techniques uh, known as read until and run until that are specific to the nanopore sequencers. So this essentially is what we're proposing in raw hash. We also have another uh, 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 contribution in this paper, but due to the time limits, I'm not going to be talking about this. So if you are interested in it, you can take a look at the paper to learn more about sequence until. So let me then show you some results. Uh, we compare our tool, raw hash, to the state of the artworks on called and uh, SIGMAP. Uh, this is our essentially CPU, and we use 32 threads. We have three use cases, read mapping uh, and uh, relative abundance estimation, meaning we are trying to estimate the abundance or the presence of each genome in a sample co uh, correctly and some contamination analysis, like we're trying to identify whether the sample is contaminated with a particular genome. Uh, uh, we have several evaluation metrics. Uh, one is throughput, which is essentially measuring the number of bases that we can process per second. And it is important to provide higher throughput than the device's throughput so that we can make real-time analysis. Uh, we are also measuring the potential reduction in sequencing time and cost uh, by the ability of stopping the sequencing of a read early. And we're also measuring the accuracy of our uh, mapping. Uh, and our baseline is uh, some, uh, let's say, very accurate tool uh, that maps the reads that maps, maps the base code reads. And we use five real data sets of varying sizes, some viral genomes, uh, bacterial genomes, and also a human genome. And uh, we combine them for the other use cases. So the first result is about throughput. Here in the throughput we show, on the y-axis we show the throughput results, on the uh, x-axis we show the data sets uh, that we use, and these bars are corresponding to the, to the uh, tools that we use. So if essentially, uh, a bar is above this line, then this means that this tool can achieve real-time analysis because it is it provides a higher throughput than the nanopore devices throughput, which is around 450 basis per second. If the bar is below this line, then this means that the real-time analysis has failed. Uh, so the first result, we pro uh, raw hash provides significant uh, throughput improvements compared to these uh, tools because of this efficient mechanism of finding similarities. The second observation is that the, one of the uh, tools, which is SIGMAP, actually fails uh, cannot perform real-time analysis for large genomes because of this com uh, computationally costly distance calculation that is performing, which I mentioned earlier in my slides. Uh, so the second uh, result that uh, I want to show is that uh, how many bases that we need to sequence before making a decision. So here we compare against uncalled, which can make real-time analysis for large genomes, and here the lower is better. So what we observe is that for large genomes, raw hash needs to sequence essentially fewer bases to make a decision. So this means that it enables uh, reducing the sequencing time and cost substantially if you are analyzing large genomes, essentially. And we'll look at also the accuracy uh, results. And again, what we observe is that for large genomes, raw hash provides the best accuracy overall in all metrics, resulting in uh, uh, 1.14 and 2.13 improvement in the F1 score. And for smaller genomes, what we observe is that the other tools are essentially more accurate because of their more sensitive, let's say, similarity calculation that they are making, which is also making them, let's say, slower for large genomes. Uh, so this is also another accuracy measurement uh, based on relative abundance estimation. What we observe is that raw hash can provide the best relative abundance estimation compared to the ground truth, uh, 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 based on the ground truth uh, compared to other tools. Uh, also, although I didn't describe the sequence until, which can essentially stop the entire sequencing run, uh, without 
sequencing the entire sample, which is usually the case in uh, usual uh, sequencing analysis. So what we observe is that by only sequencing 7% of the entire sample, we can still make as accurate as analysis as, uh, as we're making when we're sequencing essentially the entire uh, sample. So this means that we can sequence only 7%. This means that we can reduce the sequencing time and cost by almost 15x, but still provide very accurate results. Uh, and there are some simulated benefits of the sequence until for other tools. So if you're interested, in, you can take a look at uh, the paper. We also show more results in the paper, like performance breakdown and also the mapping time per read, et cetera. Details of the all other mechanisms such as quantization and the other configurations that I couldn't find a time to describe these uh, today. So if you're interested, then you can take a look at this. So this is raw hash. And uh, the source code is available. It's also very easy to install and use. So if you want to essentially improve, you can uh, definitely uh, uh, download this uh, source code and then make your changes as uh, very modular essentially uh, to, to improve. Uh, so what it, what's one benefit is that since we now can generate hash values and now figure out the similarities using hash values, which is an approach used for base code reads, when you base code them, what the usual approach is to again generate their hash values and then find similarities. So this means that actually we can now utilize the improvements or the mechanisms that we have been using for the base code list for this raw signal. Uh, one approach or one step for this is sketching. The sketching, if you remember from last week, is the sampling mechanisms or uh, figuring out which seeds to use in the subsequences. For example, we could use minimizers, stopmers, or blend uh, as sketching techniques so that we can actually even further improve our similar to search with these hash values. Uh, so with that, I'll essentially conclude raw hash. So we make two key contributions. Uh, one is first hash-based search mechanism that can be applied to raw signals to identify the similarities quickly. Second is the sequence until that can stop the entire sequencing run uh, at once if uh, further sequencing is unnecessary. Uh, we provide significant, we show significant improvements in throughput and also accuracy uh, with this approach. And then we essentially see many opportunities that can be improved uh, on top of raw hash, such as uh, applying other sketching techniques, also uh, doing some on-the-fly uh, uh, indexing for other uh, use cases. So this is raw hash. Uh, I'll quickly, very quickly, with two slides, mention raw hash too, which is essentially an improvement on top of raw hash. Uh, I'll just essentially mention our optimizations that we're making, uh, again, on top of raw hash. So one optimization that we're making is uh, we're essentially applying more sensitive chaining algorithm. Uh, remember I mentioned you some dynamic programming based algorithm that can figure out very sensitively the, the similarities between a raw signal and the reference genome. Uh, there, we make it even more sensitive. This means that this is now more costly. It requires, uh, let's say, more computations, uh, but now we can increase even accuracy even further. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we are also making now our mapping decisions based on some weighted decisions. So in a sense, this is like some learned mapping, let's say, uh, decisions based on the ways that we're choosing uh, from based on some empirical analysis. Uh, so this means that we can now uh, make these mapping decisions faster and more accurate. We're also integrating some frequency filters or some filters that uh, removes some uh, hash value matches before applying chaining. This means that we can reduce the workload of chaining a lot by removing some of these hash values. Uh, but the downside is that removing these uh, hash values can also reduce the sensitivity a bit, uh, essentially. The other uh, optimization is that uh, uh, I mentioned you, we can now apply these new sketching techniques. Indeed, we do uh, in raw hash too. We integrate, we implement, for example, minimizers and then uh, essentially evaluate its benefits. What we see is that we can essentially uh, reduce the uh, 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 storage requirements and also the improved performance a lot with this minimizer. And then we also provide some support for the newer features of this nanopore sequencer, such as there's this newer file format uh, that the uh, Oxford nanopore technologies are using. And also uh, uh, there's this newer, uh, 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 essentially chemistries or newer, let's say, sequencing technologies that are more accurate. We're also supporting these. Uh, some results, uh, raw hash 2 provides 2.3x better average throughput than raw hash uh, because of these frequency filters and the other improvements. Uh, also, raw hash 2 is more accurate in all metrics than raw hash because of the better, more sensitive chaining. Uh, uh, also, raw hash 2 uses fewer bases to sequence. 
This means that it can reduce the sequencing time and cost further than raw hash in all cases. And also for larger genomes, raw hash two uses the smallest number of phases to sequence uh, uh, compared to all tools. So this was uh, raw hash two. And I guess with that, uh, uh, I think I'm already over time, but I'll conclude. Uh,